right on schedule, Microsoft announced a bunch of Surface hardware. Happy Friday, friends. It has been a it's been an interesting week. Microsoft announced some Surface hardware. I bought a car. And uh, yeah, a lot is going on. Well, first off, the big news, at least in my life, um, well, I bought a car. It was a it's a Tesla Model Y. And I'm not here to convince you to go buy an electric car or that it is the greenest car on the planet or anything else like that or that Elon Musk is a saint. Um, I definitely think he is a visionary, but he's far from perfect. Uh, but yeah, we ended up buying a Tesla Model Y. That is where we ended up. It's a great car for just kind of putzing around the area, uh, sitting in car line at school and a bunch of other things. We probably will take it on a few road trips, but that is where we ended up. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. Um, you know, buying an electric car is, is absolutely not for everybody. There's a lot of things that have to align. Um, first off, uh, I live five minutes from a service center. Not every, you know, place in the world, at least in the US or around the globe, has a, a Tesla, you know, quote unquote, dealership or service center. Uh, we live five minutes from one of those. Um, I live five minutes in either direction to two different superchargers. So we've got a lot of charging options locally. Um, I also have a garage so that it can be kept in a car or kept in a garage. Uh, I also have charging at home, which that I think is the biggest sort of factor for probably most people is if you can a park it inside, that's not always necessary, but the bigger is that I can charge it at home and it'll do around 300 ish miles on a single charge and I can just plug it in and every morning I wake up and it's a full battery. Um, so we'll see, you know, we're still early and we're still definitely in the honeymoon phase. There's some things as is traditional with Tesla. I got to take it back um, this week to get, you know, fixed and cleaned up because it wasn't perfect coming off the line, but we'll see how that shakes up. Just be on the lookout for longer term content. This is definitely not going to pivot into a, a Tesla channel by any means. So there you go. The big news of the week. So if you could rewind the clock here, I don't know, a couple weeks back, I talked about what Microsoft was going to announce for their Surface hardware event in the fall. And so here we go. Back then, I was telling you, hey, there's not going to be a Surface Pro. Uh, there's not going to be a Surface Studio. And that's pretty much, they're not going to do a Surface Laptop refresh either. And so what they've done here is exactly what I wrote. And you can go look it all up and whatever. Um, so they announced a Surface Go Laptop, which is effectively analogous to if you have the Surface Pro and then you have the Surface Laptop. Now you have the Surface Go, and now you have the Surface Go laptop. The, the name, I get why they went that name, and it falls perfectly lockstep into their marketing and everything else, but whatever. Um, so there is the name, Surface Go laptop. Now, the pricing is absolutely interesting. So it's going to start at $549. Now, you're not getting a ton of laptop for that money. You're going to get a 64 gigs of storage of eMMC memory, which is a which is not great. Um, it's very slow memory, but it is technically solid states, but whatever. Um, four gigs of RAM. Thankfully, you are going to get an Intel Core processor. You're, they're not doing the Pentium Gold that they do in the Go tablet. Well, I've got one out of reach. Thankfully, it has a proper processor and not some dumb Intel low spec thing. So it is at least a decent processor. Um, what I really think this is, is a Chromebook competitor for Microsoft, the 549. Now, we'll come back to that in a second. There's also what I think is going to be the most popular model, which is the 699 Core i5, 8 gig, and 120 gigs of storage. Again, not a ton of storage, but with things like OneDrive and there's other ways to expand the storage um i think it's okay and it does have a slightly smaller display i believe about 12.4 inches something like that it should be a nice little compact device now one interesting thing too is go look at the corners because this actually has a rounded corner display which is going to be interesting we'll have to see how things kind of evolve there for windows but i digress uh one of the other interesting things too about this like you know pint size i call it pint size but little laptop or the go laptop is that the top is aluminum but the bottom is actually plastic or i think they call it polycarbonate it's plastic um, that is one way that they are saving cost on the device so yeah interesting stuff the other interesting thing that they did announce is the surface pro x now it's not called the pro x2 i believe it's just called the pro x and they're keeping both SKUs around which is feels kind of weird personally speaking um but it has basically all they did was they took out the old processor and popped in a new one it's called the sq2 and you can only get the sq2 if you jump up to the 1499 16 gig of ram variant and it will come in a platinum color so they're selling them side by side you can get the the pro x with the original processor the sq1 or you can get the new pro x with the sq2 processor in platinum um, i'm curious if they're keeping these things both around because i know the original did not sell all that well 
Um, but here we are. Anyway, so there's that. So you can buy either one of those, but you do have to spend a bit more. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if benchmarks really truly justify buying an SQ2 processor. I think they will, but we will see. We will see. That's going to be um, interesting. So there's uh, other things they did announce. They bought a bunch of peripherals like keyboards and, and some updated mice and some other things. But the big things are the Surface Go laptop, uh, which I want to hit back on here in a second, and the Pro X, or but it's not, but not the Pro X too. So here's the big deal I think with the Surface Laptop Go. I really think this is going to be Microsoft's quote unquote sort of Chromebook competitor because at 549 it is very much kind of towards the middle middle ish ground if you will to upper end of a premium slit premium ish uh, it's kind of weird to say that uh, Chromebook right that is the price point that this is targeting and overlapping and this is honestly a good device for the right demographic like this is the perfect laptop I would buy for my daughter uh, like you know tablets don't always work out Surface Go isn't always great. Surface Go laptop hits all marks, runs Windows. It's going to be a little bit slower, but for her online usage, and basically that's all kids do anymore, and she's not going to be, you're not going to be gaming on this thing. I, I think it's a really good price point and laptop. I think, I think, you know, I don't obviously don't have inside information because this stuff isn't even on sale yet. I think this is going to be, this is going to be the product that pushes Microsoft over the $2 billion a quarter for the Surface brand. They have yet to do it. They've gotten very, very, very close. And this might be the product because at 549, that is that is really good. That's a really good entry price. And I even think the 699 is actually a pretty decent. Yes, you're gonna pay slightly more and you could go to a different brand and get something probably a little bit higher spec for that price point. But this is a much more like Toyota Corolla um, Honda Civic style pricing, if you will. This isn't really high-end premium pricing by any means. And I think the Surface brand has pretty good recognition and known for being quality, despite the fact that they have had issues over the years. Um, but I think this is going to be, I think this is going to do really, really well for Microsoft. I think this is, I don't want to say a home run yet, because it's probably a bit early on that in case it comes out in the, I don't, I don't have one. Unless in case it comes out in this device is terrible, which I'm not expecting. So there you go. Those are the two big, big announcements. There was also uh, Windows 10 on ARM is finally getting 64-bit support. And also Teams is finally going to have a native app uh, on the ARM architecture as well, which is a huge win because that it's just, yeah, it, it's been needed for a very, very, very long time. Those are sort of the big highlights of sort of, sort of what's been announced this week. On the gaming side, uh, we've got EA Play is coming to uh, Game Pass on November 10th, conveniently the same day as the consoles are launching. And I believe that a game I'm really interested in actually now, the more that I watch, I think it's called The Falconeer. It's the, the new... Falcon game that is coming out on the same day as the consoles. I'm definitely going to be buying that one, um, regardless if it's a Game Pass or not. I think that is uh, one that looks like a lot of fun that's coming down the pipeline. Um, other things, too, happening in the gaming world, we have Games with Gold. Now, guys, I got to tell you, it feels like Microsoft is sort of mailing it in uh, with Games with Gold because I, they've got Slay Away Camp, Butcher's Cut, uh, Made of Skur. Uh, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy and Costume Quest are all coming to Games with Gold, but I think it's pretty clear that Microsoft wants Game Pass to be the new priority, and that is where they're putting all their effort to actually get games into Game Pass, not Games with Gold. And so, um, Games with Gold technically still exists, but it wouldn't surprise me if this goes away at some point. It just kind of feels like it doesn't really... It's there, and I'm not complaining that you get free games, but at the same time, like, it just feels like it's counterintuitive to the Game Pass narrative that Microsoft is trying to build. And so those are the bigger stories of the week. Um, typically, that's what is hitting on this podcast. And so there's a ton of questions, and that the questions cover a lot of what was announced this week. And so I want to make sure we get through all of those, because right now we're sitting at about 20-ish questions. Uh, so let's see here. I always tweet these out, by the way. I always get this question every week. And just follow me on Twitter, at BDSams, and you'll find the thread. I typically tweet it out Thursday around noon ish et time uh maybe 1 p.m if you want to be safe if you're just trying to scroll back through the feeds and so we will see here let's go refresh the thread aximo says very important question uh is the new surface lap laptop go lappable mary joe needs to know yeah it should be lappable although the surface laptop go is going to be a little bit narrower so if you have like a really wide stance it might be a little bit harder to lappable i believe this is going to be sort of a direct competitor to the macbook air style device so just kind of keep that in mind although a lower price point mr pki says how about a really hard question to end the week what in the world went wrong with office 365 authentication and azure active directory are they going to share a root cause analysis like google does when they have an outage so yeah there was a pretty major outage this week 
in Office 365 or Microsoft 365, and it lasted a long time. Like, and there's been some like ramifications from it, um, and it's been sort of ongoing. But I think Microsoft has finally figured out the cause and and has shared a root analysis cause. And so I'm going to try to at a very high and non-complex level tell you what happened. So uh, it was around like five-ish p.m. earlier in the week. Suddenly, like you started. Uh, I started at least personally getting notifications on my phone. It says like, hey, your Outlook credentials are, you know, you need to re-enter them. And then Teams went down. And so what initially happened was that the authentication layer broke effectively. That's a, in layman terms. Like you just couldn't log in. And then that had massive ramifications across the entire Microsoft infrastructure. Now, what we've understood here is that Microsoft tried to push out an update internally. And they have, they use rings just like they do on the Insider and, uh, programs and everything else. And this update was supposed to only hit one like a specific ring but what it sounds like is that it accidentally hit all of them and that their fail safes for rolling back once an, a bad update is applied failed because the metadata was corrupt or just did not align correctly so they couldn't just simply roll things back so they had two major uh, effectively failures one that the update that was only supposed to hit one specific ring ended up hitting a lot of them and that's what took it down and then when they went to roll it back because it accidentally did all this they could not effectively roll it back and what they said they had to do was manually roll Roll everything back which takes time and so they had a couple of cascading failures that led to the major outage which is a pretty significant deal because when effectively that layer goes down productivity for the world or anybody using Microsoft 365 comes to a halt because if you can't log in or if your users can't access it then it's completely you know it's bunk so uh, nine to five surface says surface neo was removed from Microsoft's website what is going to happen so this is a great question Microsoft removed surface neo from its website if you're not familiar with neo I don't have my duo with me because that's upstairs where I sit um, neo is like duo but it's much larger and it also runs Windows now it's supposed to run Windows 10x but Windows 10x is now focusing on single screen device rather than the dual screen experience here's what I think is happening with surface neo I think it's getting a reboot um, if you will because Microsoft came out and said hey we're delaying it it's just not not going to ship on time and so because it's not going to ship on time why they're not going to keep it on their website i think i don't think the product is officially dead I, I think that's a pretty dramatic overstatement but i don't think it's coming as soon as people would be hoping that is my my feeling here and that they are trying to rework how they are going to effectively get that product out the door eventually but i think it's going to be a little bit longer than most people are sort of hoping for at this point uh, will Microsoft ever have self-defined uh, system on chips in its Surface devices? SQs are not designed by Microsoft to use right or she, I should say, nine to five Surface. I don't know their gender, he or she. So the SQ chips that are in the Surface Pro X, even though they're called Microsoft kind of chips, they're built by Qualcomm. They're they're effectively uh, eight series or eight CX series chips that they have worked together and they just kind of rebranded them. Microsoft, I don't think is going to be getting into the complete fabrication process. Somebody, something like Apple has doing, it doesn't feel like that's really in their DNA holistically to build things for like, like a mass market device. Now, Microsoft has absolutely designed chips in the past. That is is not to say that they don't like tinker in this area but right now they're sort of a partner driven company so they work with Qualcomm because it would be, it would I think it would hurt Microsoft more than anything else to go and like buy a fab and then build their own custom processors and to go holistically the same route Apple is doing that's just never been the Microsoft model and I don't think they're going to do that and realistically if they were going to do that in a place something that might make sense would be like the Xbox right that would where you where you think it would happen first but obviously we know that they're going with AMD and they have a long history there and I don't see that changing anytime soon uh, and then his third question says, when do you think Windows 10X for single screen devices will arrive? I think our best bet at getting a first kind of look at it would be in the spring of next year. But that is, that's not, don't run with that. That's not based on a solid foundation. That would be my first guess. So. Uh, KG PDA says Surface Go laptop. Does the Surface team or Surface Go team design the Surface Go laptop? This is a good, good question. I don't actually know the answer to this yet. So the Surface Go is actually designed by a third party, and Microsoft effectively says yes, that is something we would put our branding on, and then they go and do the whole, they, they, they they go and do all the work. They build it and give it back to Microsoft, and Microsoft sells it under their own brand. It's, it's quasi white labeled, if you will, but it's not. It's not quite white labeling because other people can't sell that same design and all that. So I don't know if the same company who did the Surface Go 2 is doing the Surface Laptop. 
I'm thinking that they didn't. I have some hedging as why, but I'm not positive on that. But th that is a very good question. Uh, there are very few 3 by 2 aspect ratio Windows laptop. Does Microsoft have other SKUs of Surface Laptop Go in the pipeline uh, with AMD, Ryzen, LTE, etc.? I don't actually know if they have different SKUs of the, of the Go in the pipeline. That's an interesting question. Um, and then says, what Surface devices support USB-C charging? Well, all of the smaller devices should. Actually, technically, I think all of them do. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Surface Book 3 does. Now, it charges very slowly, I think, is the big challenge. So, uh, let's see here. Brother Nod says, how many more billions of dollars does Microsoft have to spend to build a website that can serve customers during a console pre-order? Ah, uh, this is just a fun time. So, when everybody, if you're not familiar, um, I think most people listening to this probably are, when the Xbox Series X pre-orders went up, the site, Microsoft site went down like hardcore um and despite having scalable and elastic infrastructure they were pretty slow to respond to the the, the demand that was uh hitting their servers uh, and why don't they just push delivery dates let and let everyone pre-order like apple did? this is i've gotten this question a lot so here's there's two like two ways of doing pre-orders we'll take the pr approach microsoft said microsoft took let's just use fake numbers here so microsoft says we have a hundred devices that we know will be available november 10th so on November 10th, or whenever whenever they open the pre-orders, only 100 people can pre-order, and then we turn them off. That is the that is the process Microsoft took. Now, Apple, on the other hand, just says, okay, we're going to open pre-orders, and we know we have 100 that can be on November 10th. Once we hit that, then we're just going to push the dates out and let people keep pre-ordering, and so that the sales pipeline is just really full. Why Microsoft doesn't take this route, I'm not really sure. They very easily could, and as soon as they knew those hundreds are up, then you push them out a month, and then you push them out. Maybe Microsoft doesn't have a good feeling of when... Um, the next batch will arrive. I can't imagine that is the, the the honest answer. I'm pretty sure they know pretty extensively when allotment should be arriving. Why they don't do that, I don't know. They, they could, though, and it would probably make things a lot easier. Uh, Joe says, have you heard anything about the NVIDIA 3000 series coming back into stock? Well, we know what happened with the initial stock. They all got bought by the bots and flipped onto eBay. Actually, some people did get a hold of them. Um, I did not personally order any of them because I've spent enough money this fall or, or I'm going to on various things. And uh, a new GPU, while I would love the new 3080, um, just isn't quite in the budget right now. Uh, they will come back in stock, but we don't. Ha I, I am oblivious to when that exactly will occur. I think only NVIDIA and its partners will know. And the other thing you got to keep in mind, too, is that there's a transistor problem um, with some of the, th I believe, 3080 cards where they didn't use high quality or enough of them, and some of the cards are getting tapped out. And so you might just kind of want to wait if you're going to plan on overclocking or just be very careful about the particular model that you buy. Uh, he says, I also hear that Zoom is being supported on Amazon, Amazon devices. Do you see third-party non-PC mobile devices such as Roku support? teams i mean it could in theory happen the problem the problem is is that microsoft doesn't certify things like that and make them available unless they know it's going to be good experience because they're very careful of what teams and teams is is much more ro robust in a collaboration and more importantly security perspective than say zoom so they've got a bit more requirements to get things up um up it says uh if you didn't buy the series x a monthly payment plan bundle with game pass what's the next best option to get a good price on game pass that's a really good question so if you didn't go into the the monthly subscription program um, to buy the console and you want to get game pass for less than 15 dollars a month the first option is to look to see if you can buy it bundled um for like six months that's going to be your best option if you really want to be kind of cheap and go jump through a ton of hoops there's a ton of those like two-week free trial things that you can find out like buy like a bag of doritos and that kind of stuff that is potentially your best like short-term option uh, especially if you think you're just going to be playing and then just try to mash through a couple games although you might need to be switching accounts because it might be one per account so keep keep uh, an eye on that uh, the other thing too is load times on the series x i did some rough math now this is i, I was trying to understand like you know what's the best case scenario for load times and it looked like in some instances up to 70 percent improvement Regardless of of all the math that I did, and I put it did a big spreadsheet for God only knows why, probably because I wanted to play in Excel. It looks like you're getting at minimum roughly like a 50% increase, but the load load times here appear to be significant. That is very little surprise when you're going to a much newer generation and faster chip, and you've got custom storage in there. Uh, you would expect anything less than like 50% improvement would be a disappointment. And Microsoft has done a good job at making um, making the console fast, making it load fast. That is the, that is the key here, and I think that is going to be the biggest differentiator. Most people realize it gets to the point that is one of those features, by the way, that like the first couple times like ah oh, man 
man, this is so much better. And then you forget about it, and then you kind of forget that how good it is. And then you'll eventually go back to a, an old console at some point. But wow, this is really long. And then you kind of begin to appreciate it again. Uh, Surface Duo question. Um, it says, what are your experience with the phone service on your Surface Duo? Have you called and answered using just the foldback functionality? Uh, if so, were there any dropped calls? So I have used like the actual phone functionality of it. Uh, actually, Microsoft provided an AT&T SIM. I use Verizon personally, so they provided that. And I was able to use it. No major issues. Now, I will give a ma like pretty significant uh, qualifier on that. My primary calling, though, on the device is actually with Teams. That's where I take most of like the video calls and phone calls. But I mean, I did absolutely use like the, the, the traditional, you know, dial the numbers and make a phone call. And it worked. Um, I haven't personally had any dropped calls, but I'm not saying it doesn't happen because... Because again, I'm not like a massive phone user. I'm much more of a Teams user. Um, and mostly that's just through a lot of text messaging. So maybe it's something I should pay more attention to. Uh, Waythorn says, will X64 emulation work uh, on Windows on ARM work with all existing 10 Windows, well, <laughs> all existing Windows 10 ARM SOCs or will it require a new chip? I believe it does. Now, the question is, will Microsoft enable it for all existing because of performance issues? That I don't know because there are there could potentially be some outliers um, for, you know, I, I hesitate when I say all um, because there might be something I'm not familiar with. But I believe it's supposed to. It's supposed to. Thrust Bucket says, I have several friends and family that have accumulated piles of Xbox One and 360 discs, discs over the year. They are casual and mostly interested in the Xbox Series S. So where does that leave them? Uh, there were heavy rumors of a disc to digital program brewing a few months back. I think you even reported on them, but they dried up. Yes, it was called Project Roma, and um, it has not materialized. And I think this was... I, there's... I don't want to say there's potential for this to come back, um, but I think now that Sony is doing it and Microsoft is going all, not all in, but in on it again, I think there's more potential for this to come back, but it hasn't yet. So where does this leave people like that? If you're going to be using a heavy, if you're a heavy disc gamer and want that backwards compatibility, um, your best bet, honestly, is probably just for, for the least amount of friction, I should say, your best bet is probably just to buy the Series X. That's probably going to be your best bet. I know it's not the cheaper option, but to guarantee that things just kind of work, that's probably the best place you're going to go. Uh, Side Choker says, four easy questions. Well, I like questions, and I like easy ones. So since Outlook Calendar is now standalone shortcut on the Duo, do you think it would be possible to do this with sticky notes? Absolutely. One of the things that was sort of interesting about the Duo launch is how many apps from Microsoft like didn't really kind of maximize the Duo experience. Uh, meaning uh, the calendar is like a perfect one. It's like, why wasn't that available at launch? Granted, we're not that far after launch, so it, you know I'm not going to harp on them. But Sticky Notes is a good example. Like, why wasn't Microsoft fully prepared for this? Um, it's a good question. Maybe they ran, it, ran out of devices. The pandemic likely had a big impact on it. So, you know, pick your reasoning. But I would expect expanded Surface Duo app support from first parties like Microsoft to uh, increase here in the near future. Uh, do you think Microsoft, or do you think that the same Microsoft apps on Android could get more desktop options because of the Duo? Like in OneNote to create a selection uh, section group uh, that is not possible on Android. Absolutely. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the Duo evolves. I think there's a big missed component of the Duo. Um, while they do have like the, the ability to replicate your device on your, your PC through the, the your phone app, that's not what I really want. I want the continuum experience. I think that's where we're going to see evolution, hopefully, of the Duo. At least that's what I would like to see. Uh, do you know anything about a Windows Cloud PC if it would work awesome with the Duo? I think there is a relationship there. I don't have anything specific yet. Uh, and do you have some news availability about the Duo in Europe? I don't know about Europe. Um, I, I, I don't know. I could speculate, but I don't I don't have any direct. Uh, Len Fred says, is Skype and Teams on the same software platform? If not, will Microsoft put Skype on the same platform as Teams since Teams is so successful? So, yes, um, they use a very similar backend infrastructure. Uh, at one time point, it was called Skype Teams way, way many eons ago when it was in development. That was one of the names they were looking at, but Teams just kind of won out because Skype was a little bit of a tarnished name. And so they just they just ended up with Teams. But you can see that this is absolutely real because there's a lot of features in Teams that are porting over to Skype very quickly. One, like the raise hand feature, the background blurs and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it is effectively the same platform, just a blue wrapper instead of a purple one that... Uh, teams uses i don't know if you have a duo i do have a duo but can you 
do a review of the beta launcher software. There's a YouTuber who did, and he indicated the beta launcher solved many of the software problems. So I, I tend to avoid doing beta, I shouldn't say all beta reviews. I don't like reviewing beta software on things because it's so, well, like you can't give it an opinion because it's not a launched product. Um, it's something I should definitely take out though, or take out, look at though. Uh, Sydney2k says, uh, since the reveal of the Series S and its specs, there has been a lot of talk and comment about that Microsoft might sell more Series S consoles uh, if they just made a fully functioning, uh, if they made it a fully functioning Windows 10 machine. I know you have mentioned why it won't be, but could you please reiterate the reason and why the Series console won't be a full Windows 10 machine? Because Windows 10 is overhead on the console that would reduce the gaming experience. If Microsoft, so let me be clear, Microsoft, if they wanted and I'm not saying they are right now, they could turn the Series S into a Windows 10 PC if they wanted to, but there's no reason for this. It, it, first off, to do that, they're going to have to introduce new features, or not even new features, but the functionalities that Windows 10, the full proper OS demands. Now, you could make the argument that it does partially run Windows 10 right now, but there's a lot of security components, there's a lot of other things that have to be built in and baked on top, and added to the OS that is currently there that are going to make it just feel slower. Right now, Microsoft has gone through a pretty big if you actually look i believe the os uh on the series s is actually smaller than the one x i believe i remember seeing some information about that but to turn it into a windows 10 pc they've got to add more features functionality components usb drivers and all that stuff that's just gonna bog the machine down and make it slower um, so there's no real reason to do it and i don't know exactly what people would want i guess maybe if they want to if you want a pc like i don't I understand why some people might want it because it'd be fun to tinker around with, but at the same time, I don't understand why you would want to because what are you going to do? Turn it into a gaming PC? Well, you're not going to, the gaming PC isn't going to be as powerful or optimized as a console. And so then maybe you want to browse the web. Well, you can already do a lot of the stuff that you would uh, through uh, like a home media center PC. And maybe that's the route people want to be able to stream like all their Plex stuff, but maybe you can already work, there are already workarounds for that. So I, I would struggle and understand. Uh, and I don't, uh, maybe I maybe I should ask why do people want the Windows 10 or the Series S to be a, just a proper Windows 10 box? I'm, I'm, I don't understand. Uh, any and an uh, an ancillary question: Could productivity apps be created for the Series environment, and could they be as efficient and as versatile as the desktop equivalents? I mean, sure. I mean, it's just an AMD Zen 2 processor at the end of the day, and just a Navi GPU. So, could they be as efficient as like the desktop? Yeah, but I Microsoft sells productivity software for their enterprise and business customers, and it's going to be a tough sell uh, or tough justification to say, "Hey, let's build Excel for the Series X, and then hope that we sell a bunch." Them to justify it so uh, an old amiga user says do you think that microsoft could have been better off leaving the phone app off the du duo and simply selling it as an always connected portable device from the reviewers i haven't seen some people uh people like the portable computer or tablet and dislike it as a phone so that there's a reason why in my review i called it a pda I didn't call it a, a smartphone. I do talk about it in a phone capacity. And I'm sure the word smartphone shows up in there, but like the headline is it's a Surface PDA because that's what it is. Like it, it's a productivity assistant in a hardware. It reminds me of those devices from like the early 2000s um, where you would buy like an HP compact or not, it was iPack? Was that the name of those things? Whatever they were called that ran Windows, I think Windows CE or was it Windows Mobile? I think it was Windows CE, whatever it was. And you had your calendar and everything else. That's what these, that's what the Surface Duo is best at yes the phone works um and it's there i think i think it would have been foolish to leave the phone out because since it fits in your pocket people would have really wanted a phone in there because then at that point it just becomes a small tablet sort of um i think the phone and data connectivity or the phone functionality is important because it already had to have data and so leaving that out would have been just a little weird uh, and then he says, based on your usage, if you were running the same version of Windows instead of if some version of Windows instead of Android, how many apps would you miss? It, that's a really tough question to answer because I don't know what apps would be there. So things like Spotify, things like One Password. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of comfort knowing that any app that I need is available, rather than knowing not what's not available. Um, and so I don't think I think let me qualify, clarify. Running Android on that device was the right idea, was the right move. Windows was not not going to work for that. And if they were going to run on Windows, because um, they actually had some designs like that early days, it just it wouldn't have worked out as well as it is. Um, so Android was the smart move. Uh, big Brad Bad uh, says, hey, Brad, no Surface Pro refresh this year. Yeah, if you would have watched the earlier videos, I would have told you that wasn't happening. Microsoft punted all that stuff. There's a sort of a, a bad economic climate right now. 
And so they launched, a, they launched a value proposition Surface Laptop Go, which I think was the right move. They also had the Pro X2, which was more of a premium-ish device. But um, I don't think it made a lot of sense for them to do a complete overhaul at this point. Microsoft has better data than I personally do. And so they looked at it and said, hey, look, we can just kind of hold on to this stuff. And um, it, it's all there. Like these the product lines aren't dead. This is just the route that they went. I think it makes sense. And here we go. Uh, Usman says, I remember uh, the Surface Go was created because an exam operator wanted a cheaper Surface device. I don't know if it was, bec- I don't know if that was the true reason, but that was where they sold a ton of them, like 40,000 of them. Um, they've also sold a bunch of the Surface Go 2s to another university um, that actually was their largest sale ever uh, that eclipsed that amount. So the Surface Go definitely sells in some crazy volumes um, to some customers. Uh, what was the justification for the Surface Laptop Go? Considering no sane consumer should purchase a four gigabyte, 64 gigabyte model, is that the model that they will sell to schools as a Chromebook alternative? Usman, you just hit it on the head. This is the Chromebook alternative for Microsoft. While it runs Windows 10, um, it, this is the Windows, this is the Chromebook competitor, the alternative that Microsoft is offering uh, that is not a tablet. So. And then he also says, the screen on the laptop go has curved corners. This is new for Windows 10 PCs. Uh, at first, I thought it was a render, but that's the actual design. And so this is, brings up a ton of questions. So the, the top corners are curved in. It's a, it's a nice look, but there's a lot of questions because Windows is designed for square screens. Now think about where you're, the little X is that you close applications in the top corner. Right. If it's cut off, it's going to be awkward. So is there going to be a major redesign for Windows or how is this going to shake out? Because Microsoft hasn't quite clarified how this is going to go. Uh, Not Scott says, Brad, knowing you're a big Microsoft Lite Sim fan, I absolutely am. That's why I want a 3080. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we be 3D printing joysticks for the Xbox controller mod. So there's this awesome thing out there that you can effectively print out um, joysticks and thrust things um, that connect to a, a 3D printer uh, and then you print them and then they connect to your Xbox controller and it, it kind of gives you that feeling of throttle and, and uh, a flight stick. But I don't have a 3D printer, but I'm definitely interested in this. If you are confused what I'm talking about, you can go to throttle.com and then go find uh, the forums and then find this question thread and then look for Not Scott. He's got links to it on Thingsverse. Uh, it's super interesting, kind of neat though. Uh, so Surface is going cheaper, but looking at the device and the specs, it's bulkier is a bulkier Dell or HP clunker not a better buy? So this has always sort of been the proposition, right? Surface, you don't buy a Surface for the absolute best specs. I mean, look at this thing right here. This is their super high-end Surface Book 3, but it still has a mobile processor in it. Um, it's, it's a lower spec version because it's in the tablet, not down into the base. So the fan and cooling everything else needs to be a little bit less performant than say a full-fledged, uh, the high-end performance like you might get in a MacBook Pro. Surface has always been about uh, just the quality of the device, not necessarily the best value. It's not, it's, you don't buy a Surface because it's the best value. You buy it because you think it's going to be a quality piece of hardware. It's simple. It's clean. There's not a lot of bloat installed. And so that is why you end up effectively buying Surface um, instead of saying like an HP or Dell. And that's, Microsoft does that by design because they know that HP and Dell and those guys still need to sell laptops. And if they just went for crazy uh, trying to cut out the bottom of the floor, they could do that and they could really hurt their competitor or their, their partners. And that's not something Microsoft exactly wants to be doing. And then Vladimir Amir says, uh, with the addition of Bethesda and EA Play on Game Pass and xCloud are becoming really amazing. To make xCloud absolutely perfect, in my opinion, two things are missing. A possibility to play on PC with mouse and keyboards. That is, I don't know why Microsoft isn't releasing that, but it's absolutely available and possible. And the possibility to buy games not including Game Pass, such as Cyberpunk, Call of Duty, and play them on xCloud. So that might be coming. Um, the problem is, is there's some licensing stuff, but that potential, that, that what you just said is something that Microsoft has considered, but it's not available yet. Uh, And so do you think these things are coming? I think they are definitely, um, they're not new ideas. Let's put it that way. They're definitely not new ideas. So there you go, guys. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, This is the favorite part of my week, especially the questions. It was a little bit quieter this week, but a little bit more. I mean, the Surface stuff was pretty big. Um, Not a ton of gaming news uh, out this week, but definitely a lot of hardware news, which is always a good thing. So we are into October. We are about, uh, we'll say, five weeks away from from the launch, somewhere around there, of the Xbox Series S and X. I will be getting an X. Uh, I've already pre-ordered it. And so I'm very much looking forward to that. Hopefully your September was good. Um, Hopefully your October is going to be better and thanks for watching we'll catch all of you right back here next time